with Christmas rapidly approaching, I wanted to try making some gifts this year. Woodworking has become an interest of mine, and I have virtually no experience in it, so this would also give me a chance to practice. I thought about making some boxes with lids, but I don't have a jig put together for the joinery, so I decided ultimately to try making a cheese slicer instead. I went to woodcraft.com and ordered eight of their small cheese slicer kits, but the instructions are viewable online and I wanted to get a head start on the boards before the hardware arrived. So I went to my local Menards and bought an assortment of 1x4s. These are surfaced on four sides, which was a requirement for me because I don't have access to a planer or a joiner. I took all the wood down to the basement and started ripping some of the boards down into smaller strips. The plan was to make several different looking boards by using different types of wood on each board and varying the width of each of the strips. I did have some problems with my table saw blade burning the wood. After looking it up, I learned that this can be caused by several different things, including having a dirty blade, a dull blade, or even just not pushing the wood through the blade fast enough while cutting. I ended up cleaning my blade with a brush and some water and detergent. Any burn marks that remained I could sand off afterwards. The instructions for the small cheese slicer kit recommend something around 4 and 3 quarter inches by 7 inches, although these dimensions can vary. My first glue up here was 24 inches wide and 5 inches deep. This allowed me to safely have enough material for three boards. I'm using tight bond wood glue for the glue up and a couple of clamps that I had from previous projects. The wood types here are mahogany for the main center strip and maple for the two outer strips. I decided I better go ahead and add a couple extra clamps in the middle just to make sure everything's nice and tight. I cleaned up the glue squeeze out on the top, but I forgot about the bottom, and when I came back the next day, I had to tear it off the paper. It wasn't ideal, but it was all going to get sanded down anyway. Before moving on to cut up the first three boards, I put a fresh sheet of paper out, and then did my next glue up, which was hickory in the middle and mahogany on the outside. And off camera, I propped it up to avoid the paper issue. For sanding, I used 120 grit sandpaper on the orbital sander and did this on all six sides. I then switched to 220 grit for a second pass. It was time to square up the uneven ends before cutting this board into three separate pieces, but I was having trouble with some tear out, and cleaning my blade didn't help here. I tried to fix the problem by using some tape. And while that can sometimes do the trick, it didn't help me this time. Plan B was to use a speed square and a utility knife to score a straight line where I wanted to make the cut. Since the tear out happens on the bottom where the blade exits the cut though, the line had to be placed down which made it hard to match up with the blade. This meant I had to put a score line on the top side as well, so it was a little bit tedious, but it did work. What I ultimately decided to do was throw down some money and buy this 100 tooth finishing blade by Diablo. This blade was about 50 bucks on Amazon, but I think it's worth its weight in gold. Just as an example here, I'll cut through this piece of hickory with the blade to show you the finish. So it left a couple wood fibers that could be wiped away with your finger, but overall it leaves a nice smooth finish with no tear out. After splitting the wood up into three boards, I took the first test board over to the table saw. 
Now, since the instructions recommend the board be four and three quarter inches wide, and my board was five inches wide, I had to take an eighth of an inch off of either side. As you can see, this caused some burn marks on the side of the wood again from pushing too slowly. But also the five inch width works just fine with the hardware. So this was the only board that got cut down to four and three quarter inches. After sanding off those pesky burn marks with the orbital sander, I used a doweling jig to drill the hole where the cheese slicer arm would be inserted into the board. But because some dummy pointed the camera a little too low, I guess you can't really see, huh? For the cheese wire slot or groove, I set my fence to two inches and then stacked up some washers to about three eighths of an inch and used them to set the height of the blade. There was just a little bit of tear out here on the back side, but a sanding block would fix that later. Since this was my first board, I figured it would be a good idea to do a test assembly just to make sure that I didn't screw something up somewhere and make it so the hardware doesn't fit. I was relieved to see that everything worked just fine, but I also decided that I wanted to add a little bit more customization to each of the boards since they were pretty basic as is. I removed all the hardware again and then clamped the board down to the work surface and then used my router with a roundover bit to put a nice beveled edge on the top surface. But wouldn't you know it, I ran into another issue. Since I already drilled a hole for the cheese slicer arm, the bearing on the roundover bit went into this hole slightly as I was rounding over the edge. This caused the roundover bit to cut into the board ever so slightly. As you can see, I also had some burn marks from going too slowly. So on future boards, I'd have to make sure that I use the router before drilling the hole and the little bit of rough edge that was left behind by the router was easily fixed with a sanding block. After catching up the other two boards to the first test board, the next step was to apply some cutting board oil. This is the kind of thing that you don't really think of as an essential step, but after you do it the first time and see the difference it makes in the wood color, you wouldn't do it any other way. After two coats of oil, the boards were looking just beautiful. And I finished up with a coat of this butcher block conditioner. I won't bore you with all the details, but I made a bunch of other boards out of other cuts of wood and got those caught up and oiled just like the first set. I bought these Irwin clamps midway through this project and they seem to be the perfect size for this. I'll be sure to leave links down below to these clamps, the Diablo blade, and other tools that I used. This first board here is made out of mahogany and alder. And the second board is made out of a dark piece of poplar. Poplar is a little bit soft, I think, but as long as you're not using a knife to cut something directly on the board, I think it'll be okay. After all the boards were assembled, I added some non-slip feet, as well as some Christmas flair to make them look a little bit more presentable. Thanks for joining me on my first woodworking project. I'm pretty happy with how these turned out, and hopefully the recipients will be too. Merry Christmas.